In this section, I'm joined by Doug Millard, who is the curator of the space collections at the Science Museum and has spent all his working life dreaming of doing this exhibition. Well, I'm here in the cosmonaut section of the cosmonaut exhibition with you, Doug, and we're standing in front of some objects that record one of the extraordinary moments when the first cosmonaut mission was actually successful, of course, Yuri Gagarin. I wonder if we could start with actually some rather surprising objects, which is this lab coat here. Well, this says Cosmos Nash, space is ours, and this captures the the pride, the happiness, the reaction of the people. Long live Gagarin, uh, the fairy tale comes true. This is all about the impact of Gagarin on the Soviet people. One of the things that uh, resonates so much for people uh, in this country who remember Gagarin is his triumphant visit to Britain. And first of all, it's quite an interesting story, isn't it? Because it wasn't an official government invitation. It was uh, a trade union invitation. It was indeed, yes. I mean, Gagarin, his, his first profession was a steel worker. And here we have a medallion presented to him by the Amalgamated Union of Foundry Workers uh, to a fellow worker from across the water. It was they who had invited him to the UK. And the, the official nature of the visit gradually caught up with the event and it turned into a, a massive success. And one of the things that amuses me about uh, the history of this, uh, this great visit, is the great photograph that was never taken uh, because famously he had lunch with the Queen, but we have no picture. So we have rather strangely uh, a picture of the royal family. So why do we have a picture of the royal family in, in the exhibition? Well, this picture is doubly important because it was presented personally by Her Majesty to Gagarin. But if we look closely, we can see a little stamp in the corner that was applied in space on the Mir space station when Helen Sharman took this up into space on her mission in 1991. Wonderful. So Doug, we're now looking at Vostok 6, which, if I can use a highly technical scientific term, is a real humdinger of an object. Uh, it really is uh, incredible in its physical presence. So this is what took Valentina Tereshkova into space in 1963 as the mm. first woman in space. Oh, where to begin? It's mm. just an incredible object. The idea yeah. of a human being going into space and, and coming back in this. Mm. How long was she in space for? Three days inside that spacecraft. It's extraordinary, isn't it's, it? It's truly astonishing, truly astonishing. And I think I'm right that quite a few things went wrong at the beginning of the mission because she felt there was some problem with the alignment. Yes, it was nearly catastrophic. She realised that the whole spacecraft was orientated out of kilter, about 180 degrees. So she told ground control and they had to send up instructions to right the spacecraft. She wasn't flying it, it was being flown from the ground. If that hadn't happened, then uh, when she had fired the, the retro rockets to bring her down, to slow her, so that gravity could pull her back down to the ground, it would have done exactly the opposite, and it would have shot her up into a higher orbit where she would have eventually died. One of the things that for me is so exciting about this object is to see how essentially it's been shredded to pieces by re-entry. Mm. Well, this came down as a fireball. It was, it was a light, it was like a, a meteor just streaking through the sky, but it was designed to do that. When you're travelling 17,500 miles per hour around the Earth, you need to lose that speed. And it does that by turning it into heat, heat energy. So this heat shield literally burned, and that all helped the slowing process. But as you, as you say, it, it was completely battered. You can just see the remains of the thermal blanket that wrapped around the whole spacecraft. There is some, some fractures there, possibly when it hit the ground. So it's had some severe testing. Well, Doug, we were just looking at Vostok 6 in 1963, uh, and now we're at 
Voschgod one, which is in 1964. And on the face of it, it looks like no improvement at all. It looks exactly the same as what we've just seen. But of course, the big difference was that actually the cosmonauts could stay inside for the landing. Yes, and there's an amazing reason for their being able to stay inside. But uh, this was all about trying to steal the march again on the Americans because they were planning and publicizing their Gemini missions, which would fly two astronauts. So the Soviets got in first, not with one, not with two, but with three cosmonauts. The thing that actually really shocks visitors is when they look inside this capsule and see what that really means. Because we saw earlier with Vostok 6 what appeared to be a very claustrophobic experience for Valentina Tereshkova, that's a positive luxury experience compared to what the three uh, cosmonauts experienced on this mission. And, and so how on earth did they manage to fit them into that small space? It re required a, an amazing amount of imagination. Possibly the fact that one of the cosmonauts that flew on this mission was actually the Vostok and Voskhod designer, Fyot Tistov. So he knew exactly what he was doing, but they had to squeeze three people in. They had to be facing entirely the wrong way. So the viewing window was on their left. So the later Voskhod mission, Leonov talks about rather like trying to drive your car while looking out of the side window. So it was an incredibly dangerous mission. And we should also explain on a very practical level why this rather humble object here is actually rather revealing. So we have in the middle of this exhibition of the glories of the Russian space program what appears to be a woolly hat. Now explain to me, chief curator of the exhibition, why there is a woolly hat in the exhibition. Well, we've already talked about the fact that there, were, there, were, there was no room for ejector seats. That's why they had to stay inside and retro rockets fitted to the parachutes but there still wasn't enough room even to wear spacesuits. So these three cosmonauts went up in fairly conventional thermal garments, including a hat like this. This belonged to the commander, Vladimir Komarov, really just uh, emphasizing, particularly in this display, the vulnerability of the crew inside this spacecraft. There was, there was little else to protect them. So we've talked about Tereshkova in 63. We've talked about the Voshkod mission in 64. Behind me is the section of the exhibition dealing with the other great landmark in 65, with the, which is Alexei Leonov, the first man to walk in space. Extraordinary to think just a year after this, this great pioneering moment happened. But terrible things happened as well, didn't they? And but just behind us is a wonderful sculpture that we were very keen to borrow from the Tretyakov which is really a memory to those people who lost their lives. And, and so uh, we, we were looking here at Komarov's cap from the, the mission in 1964, a great hero, but in fact, actually, his story ended very unhappily and is, I think, typical, isn't it, of, of what happened at a certain point in the program? Yes, and also to Bondarenko, who died in a flash fire on the ground during a test just a few weeks before Gagarin was launched into space. It just reminds us that what these people were doing was supremely dangerous. Well, why don't we, um, after that rather sombre note, go through to the next section of the exhibition and look at something which shows another heroic part of the Russian program that is almost entirely unknown still. Why don't we go and take a look? <laughs> 